So how do we leverage automation to help us validate the installation of access points? In this little demo scenario, we just installed some access point on site uh, and we want to validate that uh, you know everything is fine. We want to kind of catch some of the uh, problems we may have when we install APIs on site. And we're going to use you know, the MIST API, again, in this case, to retrieve information from the access point and do a couple of uh, checks against uh, these informations. And what we're going to do as well is feed in the Wi-Fi design so we can get information about, you know, the AP name that we're supposed to have, the location that we're supposed to get, the orientation of the AP that we're supposed to, to get, and, and compare that to uh, how they install or install the access point to, uh, to you know, try to... Uh, a spot if we have any issues uh, and spot the prob the issues become before they become bigger problems. So in this scenario, you have in the diagram here, um, you know, the different validations that we're going to do in this example here, we are retrieving all the, the information about the access point uh, from the MIST cloud using the API. And then we will check the AP status. So we'll check if the AP is connected, disconnected, upgrading. If it's not uh, connected, we can um, retrieve, you know, the reason why is it because it doesn't have an IP is because of it's a, of a DNS issue, a cloud not reachable. So we can get this status in, uh, which can help us to troubleshoot what's wrong. Then we can look at the firmware. So we'll take a look at which firmware the AP is on and we'll validate that against what we're supposed to have. And we can configure for, you know, different model of APs, which version of firmware we are kind of standardizing against. Then we'll check at the AP power. We'll look at PoE, make sure we have enough PoE, make sure that the, the AP is not under powered. Uh, that can cause a lot of issues down the road. So we want to kind of spot those issues right away. Uh, then we'll take a look at the uh, Ethernet connection of the APs, make sure that they are connected using the proper speed and make sure that we don't have any uh, duplex mismatch problems or port errors uh, that might indicate maybe a bad cable or something that the installer can actually fix uh, right when they are already on, on site. Uh, then we'll take a look at the AP device profile. So that's something that's missed a specific, but you can assign different device profile based on how you want to configure the access point and we can actually double check this against what we're supposed to have. And then using the design information, the location of the APs and the name of the APs, we can validate if the APs on the MIS dashboard have been named properly and have been placed on the map where they were supposed to be or have been installed where they were supposed to be. And lastly, we can check the orientation of the access point. So some of the missed access points have an accelerometer inside of, of them. So we can actually check how they've been installed on the wall, face up, face down, and we can validate uh, if that matches the Wi-Fi design. Okay, so I'll show you what I have right now in my MIST dashboard. I have a little environment with one site. We have three APs here. As you can see, they, we have different models, a, a 32E, an AP12, an AP41. And in this scenario, we could think that, you know, the installer is done installing the APs and it is just calling us to make sure that everything is fine. And at that time, we can run the script uh, to see what's wrong. So I can just run the script. It will get the information from the cloud and do all of those validation for me. And it will present all of these results in, in tables here in my terminal. And you can see that, you know, in this case, all of the APs are connected, which is good. On the firmware, you can see that one AP is failing. It's not using the firmware that we were expecting it to use. Uh, it's just using a lower version. So we can actually take that information and, and go upgrade the AP to, uh, to pass this test. Then we have the PoE validation. We can see that another AP here, number three, is underpowered. Uh, it's using AF and it's uh, getting 19.5 when it actually requested more, 30 watts. Uh, so we could take a look at this and see what the problem is. Uh, on the Ethernet speed, we can also see that one AP is failing. Uh, we were supposed to, uh, we were expected to use multi gig with 2.5 gig here, and we only got one gig. So here it's failing. Uh, for the Ethernet duplex, you can see that here everything is good. All the APs negotiated a full duplex connection, and we don't have any port errors, which is good. It's telling us that everything uh, worked properly here. For the device profile, we can see that, you know, everything looked good here. Um, the device uh, have been assigned the, the proper device profile. Uh, so everything is good here. For the AP name, 
same thing, everything matches the Wi-Fi design in this case. So this is perfect. Well, we'll go back and, and break this and I'll show you the, uh, the, the alternative here. For the OP orientation, you can see that um, for two of them, I don't have the accelerometer, but you know, for most of the Wi-Fi 6 APs, now we do have an accelerometer for, th for the 32E. You can see we passed the test here and the AP is installed vertically and it has been designed that way in the, in the, in the Wi-Fi design. So we are all good here. For the location, we have a couple of APs that have not been in installed where the design defined them. So we could go back and see how we're supposed to uh, move them in order to match the Wi-Fi design. So if I go back to my um, little interface here and I take uh, AP number one, for instance, and, and I rename it, I, I just modify the name, I remove the device profile. So here I just broke the AP name and the device profile. I could try to run the script again and we should see that um, now the, the AP name fails and it's telling us that you know it's, it's called this way and it's supposed to be called that way. So at least it's giving us the, the proper name. Um, and then for the accelerometer, it doesn't work because it couldn't find the AP in the design. So it couldn't actually cross-reference that information. So the name of the AP is actually in, important here. Um, and you can see also that the device profile here is failing as well and now that we've changed it. So once again, it's telling us what it's what is expected to be used here. Um, so as you can see, it's a, it's a little demo that tells you that, you know, we can actually retrieve information from the cloud as soon as the APs are online and we can cross reference a couple of important metrics and information about the APs to try to catch problems as the AP is getting installed. The installer is still on site. We can still ask him to check a cable, make sure, you know, uh, the, the switch is, is uh, powered properly and, and do a few validations before they leave the site and that that you know prevents problem from uh, happening later on the road affecting users creating a support tickets taking you know people's uh, uh, time and effort and worst case scenario we'll have to send someone else back on site uh, to figure out that something has not been installed properly um, and and that can cost a lot of money for the truck walls especially as you scale and you have a lot of uh, a lot of sites so this, you know, here we present the output in, in a terminal, but you can think of building, taking, the, taking it to the next level and uh, creating like a web app or maybe a, um, you know, a mobile app that uh, you can let your installer use uh, so they can validate that everything has been installed properly. Thank you. Oh, my God.